Hello, welcome back. And so the last time we finished, we were looking at basic forms and we did a uh, basic form, HTML form with just a label and input field and a button. And we did it in three ways. We used basic HTML, we used bootstrap library, and then here's the AngularJS one material library one that we finished up on. So I want to continue talking about HTML tags, but I'm not going to use, you know, the bootstrap or Angular mat or material library. I'm just going to use straight up HTML. And then once you see how to use that, then you can go to whichever library you're using and look at the corresponding way. And as you can see, it's basically the same thing uh, regardless, right? You know, the only difference like in material, they might call it MD button, for example, but, but simple things, like, but you can find it. I show you how to find all that information. So um, let's uh, erase all of this and um, let me paste in some simple code here. And basic, oh, before I do that, um, what I should do is, um, and I could save this. Uh, I want to go to the command line and I want to say git um, branch, um, no, git co minus branch and uh, is branch. And I want to check, um, create a branch called more uh, form tags. And so I'll switch and I switched because my file was modified. Um, now on this branch, you see me have a modified file. So that's why that's why it's red. And so um, let me see, is there any way to refresh this? So that um, uh, ch -ch -ch more form. No, it doesn't show up here. Um, all right. I um, wish there was some way to. Um, uh, refresh um, things. So, oh, yeah. So once I click open that same folder again, it picked it up. Anyway, so that's fine. I wish I would detect it and somehow I'll just keep monitoring the directory. So before we get into that though, I wanted to show you this image that I found a while back and um, I've been meaning to share it. And so um, let me make it a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna say view zoom to fit. Oh, okay, it's actually the size. Okay. So you can see HTML tag, it's a like periodic table of elements, um, you know, just like your periodic table of atomic elements. But here <laughs> it's uh, the HTML um, elements. And so your first tag uh, is HTML tag here. And then you have your head tag and then some of the other tags that goes into head tag. Then you have some of your presentation tag, basically. Um, and there are tons of tags there. You don't have to memorize them. I said this earlier. You really don't want to memorize. You really want to understand how to use a tag, where to find more information on tags. And, um, you know, if you want to use something and you don't think it's there, you just go look. And then, uh, you know, and then chances are the library you're using is going to provide alternative for the, some of these things and make some of these things easier and have examples of certain things you could do as we saw in the previous video. And so, you know, these are like your list and so on, rules, you know, with the diff tag, we use that a lot. Um, form tags, uh, we're going to be covering some of these, like form field, select, legend goes with form field, option group, label we've seen already, options goes with select, and you will see is a sub element sort of used inside of select, input, and um, some of these are even new, like output, the HT, we were, most of the tags uh, came from HTML4 and then HTML file, the they changed some of them and added some a number of them like header and section and footer and nav were added in HTML5 and a number of these and a lot of these too. Like RP and RT tag, I don't even know what those are for. I've never used them. I'm not going to worry about trying to learn them now. When I ready to do something that I think maybe I need something that is not there, I might go look and say, oh, what does those tags do? Or what new tags are available in HTML5 that I don't know about that might make my life easier. And of course, you know about the header tags and so on. Um, to do that one menu and so on, and of course other table related ones. So that's kind of just want to show you this. If you Google, if you go on Google uh, Images and you do periodic table of elements, you should find this one or a few like it. There are a number of them I saw. All right, so let's continue. So here's our basic form, and the only thing I've changed from what we did before was I added three input fields instead, and instead of calling this one name like we had before, I call it you know first name and last name and then email and notice the type here the type is set to text and then here the type is set to um, email um, let me add another um, you know uh, input and let's 
let's just call it label for uh, let's call it zip um, maybe age okay and if we're asking someone for their age we know um, it should be in number okay and so and I'll show you uh, now one of the nice things why I encourage you to um, so I'll take out the place over for this one of the nice reasons why I encourage you to use the libraries for you know your form design and page design not only give you a lot of layout um, feature and the looks and all this other stuff but some of the things that they give you is just feedback on if something is invalid so for example if name is required I can actually say required uh, come on required um, if that is required I can say required and so different browsers would treat this differently. So let me save this, refresh here. And some browsers, you know, if you don't type it in, it show you a red mark around it or something like that. But um, you're not seeing that here. But if you use the library like AngularJS Material, once you say something is required, it shows you like red. And, you know, it, you can put validation on it, but all that come built in, so you get all that for free. So I don't see why you'd want to go building your application with just the basic forms when the libraries enhance them so in so many ways with things that you would have to do anyway if you wanted to build a modern application that gives users good feedback and so on. You'd have to put all those validation in there that says. And so people, the way people were doing it before is there something that's required, they'd put a star here and they'd say, you know, everything that's star uh, is required and they put something at the bottom to tell you that that's required or they might put um, a red star right so they'd use like a span tag for example and say style you know um, color red and um, star in there and so that would draw your attention so um, so instead of going through all of that why not use a library like bootstrap of material that allows you to you know take care of that stuff once you say required they annotate it and they allow you to put messages in the end that could show up to the user that says hey this is required and this is the range or this is the value so anyway, let me continue so this let's go john doe and then uh, email address is john um if i could only spell at email.com right and so if this was typed like this, that's invalid email address, right? So the user would get feedback to know that. What about here? This is um, set up as um, a number field. If I try to type, you can't see it, but I'm trying to type letters in here and it wouldn't go in. But if I type a number, it goes in, right? And so um, it's important that when you have input field, you try to limit it in such a way that's appropriate for the type of input you're asking. So you help the user not make mistakes. Because if somebody starts trying to type here and not paying attention, and they don't see the input going, they go, oh, all right, what am I doing? I'm supposed to type a number there. Um, there are some other ones. Let's say, for example, for age, the num is, um, the, there's another way you can limit this. You can say, I want to do a, uh, a range, right? And so um, if you set it as a range, notice how oh, it shows up there. And now you could say, I'm looking for people who uh, with a minimum age of, you know, min equals 18 and max equals, I don't know, um, 75 or something, 78, whatever, 50, right? And so now, uh, let me see, save this. I don't want to save this on page. So if I refresh, so this, believe it or not, is going from the value um, 18 to 78. You can't see it because I don't have anything that's showing what the current value is. And um, that's another thing is uh, if I actually wanted to show what the current value here is, I would have to attach, and I don't want to sidetrack, but where we do JavaScript and we haven't covered it yet, I'd have to add some JavaScript that read this value when it's changed and so on to display. But there are easy ways of doing it as we'll see later. Um, so anyway, so just trust that oh, this value, this current value is that. And I can prove it by saying, let's say the value of this input the default value is 20. You should see that the knob is somewhere close to the corner, right? 
and then if I put the value as 70 and I save it and refresh, it should be somewhere close to the end. And so that's consistent with the, that it going from like 18 to 70, 78, okay? So what do we cover now? We've covered text, I think. What if you wanted an input where somebody could type like a note, for example? So let's um, put this and say um, note or description, or maybe I'll just stick with note for now. And so you want somebody to be able to type a note. Um, ah, wrong, type is text area. And text area allows you to, and then you could say column, columns equals, let's say 80 for example, and rows equals like four. And single quote would have been fine. And if I remember how to use this correctly, uh, oh, it's touch and shop. Um, so calls, I thought there was a columns um, attribute. I had to set the width and then there was, there's also a row attribute. I'm pretty sure there's a column and rows attribute. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up, but when in doubt, this is what you do. The W3C school and we're going to open this up a little bit so we have the side menu. And then I'm looking here for HTML. And then I'm looking for form elements, right? And the ones I'm looking for, um, for the text area, the one I'm looking for. And for text area, let's see here, calls, yeah, calls equals the 50, rows equals, oh. It's not input, it's actually its own element. Uh, my bad. Uh, See, so it's getting, come and look this up. All right, so uh, text area is actually its own element and it's not a, like a subtype of input. Okay, so, and there we go, right? And a browser like um, Chrome here allow you to actually resize that, but you see it's rendered differently. All right, so it's that after the initial um, row height and columns we could put as 80. All right, there are many more um, types that you can use for input. Okay, um, you can, I mentioned the other day, password and um, the date and time. And so um, maybe instead of age, we want to do is say date of birth. And so date of birth. And so DOB, and I'm going to take off this because there's no longer, and then type um, date. And so if I refresh, now um, um, this is what this field look like. And you can select, let's see. Um, I don't know why this got all weird, but, uh, oh, minimum. Uh, that's not valid for data birth, and maybe that's why it's completed. Yeah. Why is this completed? Uh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Is it right now? Oh, I don't know. Why is that weird? Okay, let me take this one out. All right, so you get the idea. Um, something, I probably made a mistake in somewhere I'm not seeing right now, and so it's not rendering properly. Um, so refresh, okay. So you, you get the idea. Um, one of the other things you can do, so let's say you wanted to, you know, group um, these fields together. So you have, you know, this information, th these fields that s seem to pertain to the person's uh, personal information. And you have another set of inputs here that let's say, um, you can uh, say it's their street address, you know, so street one and street two. And this is gonna be city. And the type of course is gonna be text. And maybe um, this is gonna be uh, state, for example, and um, text and um, Let's put another one for zip. All 
right? And that is going to be a number and zip. And the name here is state. And we leave a country for now, right? City. I just want to show something. And street two. And let's say street one. So this allows somebody to type in their address. And I'm going to take out this placeholder because um, the placeholder was just there to give you an idea of how you can use a placeholder and when you should, not when, you got to know if you should use it or not, if you think the user needs some prompting. But what I want to show is um, this other thing called, see it's like a, I think it's all jumble up there or whatever. Um, let see. Refresh. Where is my, um, that's, oh, of course I didn't change any of this. city and street okay all right so there we go but look at it I mean of course you could use a table to still lay it out and that's that's fine um, if I'm if I'm not using any one of those library I'm gonna stop mentioning that I try to but I can say um, field set and then I can say legend and I think it's caption um, actually maybe it's just it, like this um, anyway I could say um, this personal information and um, I could grab all the stuff that has to do with personal information and cut them and stick them in here and so it, uh, let me beautify this a little bit beautify save and so if i refresh there you see those fields are in this nice little border um that's you know got a label on there and so i can do the same thing here i can say field set and then um legend and then i'll do address just in for something like that and then personal info you know whatever and so uh, I could copy these and cut them and stick them in here and then I'll again beautify and so I'll save that and refresh and so now you see it's a little bit nicer I mean still I need to do some laying out of this what I, I, I want to do like uh, BR here or use something more exotic like you know those divs and all that sort of stuff to group things or a um, or a table that's that's not what we're talking about we're not talking about layout now I showed you laying out already so just got to piece it together but here I just kind of want to show you and of course just doing device because the labels have different sizes not lined up and looking well the space in between it so you definitely want to do something like at least a table for your layout but you should probably go to some of the other libraries, um, Bootstrap and Angular Material, where they take care of aligning things for you, okay? So, okay, so that's that. Well, let's look at some other um, form elements. Um, so, you see example of, you know, a number of them. So, so let's look at field set, look, uh, look at, um, let's do field set, and let's do, um, we can call this other. <laughs> Just a hell of it. And so um, here, um, let's do um, a, st oh, actually we could go up and do states here. Um, uh, maybe, yeah, uh, let's do states. And so we have a state here. Let's do a select tag. And there we could put, um, that other two main, I think um, that's a load. Um, so option, right? And we can say, um, you know, Arizona, and and I'm not gonna put other states in there. So I'm just running, you know, Alabama, whatever. And of course, it's not alphabet alphabetical because I didn't really give this much thought. And so New York. 
and you know New Jersey, yeah, New Jersey. And you know, actually I should probably just put on other states that I've lived in. There are two of them there that I haven't lived in. Um but on one of them I had never visited. Um let's see, option. Um let's see. Alright. Um all right. So let's go with that. Okay, maybe I am gonna add one more. All right, so now when I save that and I go over here and I refresh, you could see um, my list box, um, drop down, selection box, whatever you want to call it, that shows those. And so there's a value you can attach to each one of these. So you can say value, for example, um, equal Arizona, for example. And so uh, let me do New York as another one. I can do value equals New York. And so if I want this to have um, be selected, um, I could say value for this. Um, actually, it's the, so the, the value of the selected option is going to be assigned to this selection called state. But when you, you, all you select it is you say selected. And we can just say selected or selected equals true. And so if I refresh, you can see New York is selected. That's because I put selected on the New York one. If I move that to, let's say, California, for example, then naturally when I refresh, oh, I don't have to refresh. See, California is selected. No, there are ways to deal in and handling this because um, to make things easier. And it's just the default one that you want selected, but uh, there are other ways uh, you can get the same effect. And we, as we select, you can see a change and all that stuff, but I'm not going to cover all that. I just wanted to show you one, how to do a select box drop down, how to put options in it, how those options could have values so that this is what's displayed. It was called like the label. This is what's displayed to the user and this is what's assigned, okay, to the value there. Um, and how to set the selected one. Now, what if you wanted to group um, states? So um, you want to do a grouping. So um, let's just say I'm not going to try and think of grouping states by which is on the East Coast, which is the Midwest, and all that stuff, right? Because I have states here in the South also. So what I'll do is I'll just say I want to group the force two. So create two groups. So option group. And um, I think, let me see. Um, um, maybe, um, yeah, so label equals group one. And so I'm going to create that. I'm going to select some states and cut them, put them in this group. I'm going to, I'm going to beautify just now. And I'm going to say option group, uh, label, and then group two. And then I'm going to select my other set of states, cut them, put them here. I'm going to end this video just now because it's going to get too long. And I promised I was going to keep videos about 15 to 10 to 15 minutes, and they've been way longer than that lately. All right. So now when you look at um, the states, you see this group. So that, that's kind of nice. You can't actually select the group. You still have to select one of these options, but the grouping is kind of nice. Uh, so... There you go, select using option group, using options. Um, we didn't do checkbox, but checkbox is very, very easy. Um, um, just since, since we are here, um, I can do a checkbox and I'll make it um, this guy and I'll say um, sex and I'll do sex, male, Female, excuse me, sex, and I'll do type checkbox. And you can do also selected here, if I'm not mis if I remember this correctly. And so um, checked, sorry, not selected, checked. I believe it's checked, but anyway, we'll see. And so if I refresh, you can see I have this checkbox sex 
um, this chick back here, male or female, and um, you know the implication being that of this male check it if it's female don't check it but whatever you can make this more clearer um so like so now you see how to do checkbox and there's there's radio a radio group which is the more circular one and it allow you to choose between a number of things so this would probably be better to be used as a radio group so that you can um you know uh specify multiple um or option group um you know, it's, it's another way um, of thinking about it. Um, so, um, well, I guess I'll, let's see. Uh, should I do, yeah, oh, we look like we're running out of time here. So you could go look at the other ones um, um, because they're so, once you go here, um, you can see all the examples of using the other um, ta tags. So I'm not going to spend time going over something like that that you can do. So the only one I was mentioning is uh, for input. Yeah, so these are the, the different types of, for input, these are the different types. So you have checkbox, which we just do color, date, time, email, we did file, we didn't look at image, whatever, month, uh, password, radio. And that's the one I was talking about. Uh, so you know, you can certainly look up example of all of these. Um, you know, we did range. And so, um, all right, that's it. And see you in the next video. Um, I don't know yet what I'm going to cover in the next video. I think um, basically it's form elements. Once you get the basic idea of doing forms, we, we talk about how you get the information to the back to other parts of the application or anything like that, but everything, there's just too many things to tie together that you have to learn. So we'll just have to go with this for now. And then I think we're gonna jump out to HTML and just look at CSS next or whatever it is, Java, or whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, considering the um, periodic table of elements I showed you earlier, um, as you can see, there's just too many um, tags and um, we just can't go through all of them but I think we have enough of most of them now to be able to actually start talking about how to style them and then how to control them through code and then get into using some a framework like Angular to actually build an application okay that's the whole goal you want to see how to use this HTML to do something useful like building an application or a website and so let's try and get to that um, you can just always reference all these things all right Take care and thanks. See you later.